terms of payment. Getting paid for providing goods or services is critical for any business. However, getting paid for an international transaction, also commonly known as export receivables, can be very different experience from securing payments on business due to the number of extra factors that can influence the process. In this lesson, we are going to study various aspects related with terms of payment. After studying this lesson, you should be able to understand terms of payment, documentary credit, letter of credit. The terms of payment are instrumental in attracting foreign buyers and thus expanding the export business. Many exporters are able to clinch an order on the basis of attractive payment terms, even though they may not be competitive from the viewpoint of price or quality. Payment terms are determined by a host of factors such as exchange control regulations, trade practices, financial position of buyers, and above all, bargaining strength of the trading partners in India. Exchange control regulations play an important role in this regard. According to these regulations, the amount representing the full export value of the goods exported to all countries other than Bhutan and Nepal must be realized within six months from the date of shipment. Any deviation from the rule will require the Reserve Bank's prior approval. There are four methods of receiving payments from the overseas buyers. These methods carry risks of varying nature. Hence, the choice depends largely on the bargaining strength of the trading partners. Where an exporter is unable to procure order with advance payment, the next best alternative is the documentary credit method. In this method, at the instance of importer, banks, usually in the importing country, sends a letter to the exporter giving an assurance or an undertaking that the payment will be made soon after shipment. In order to ensure that the exporter complies with the agreed terms and conditions of the sales contract, the latter from the bank stipulates submission of certain documents. As credit is given to the exporter on the basis of documents, the methods is referred to as the system of payments through documentary credits. There are several parties involved in the documentary credit arrangement. First, it is the importer who is referred to as the applicant in terms of UCP who initiates the process. Secondly, the banker who issues the letter of credit to the exporter is referred to as the opening or issuing banker. Thirdly, the banker to whom the letter of credit is sent for authentication and delivery is referred to as the advising banker. Fourthly, where a credit provides for bills of exchange, the paying bank is the bank on which such bills are drawn. Fifth, where the paying bank is not located in the exporter's country, Credits usually permit a bank or bankers in the beneficiary's country to negotiate drawings under the credit and disburse the amount of the exporter. The documentary credit gives many particulars, though the form and order vary among banks. These particulars include name of the issuing bank and type of credit with number and date, on whose behalf the credit is issued the applicant or buyer, the amount including the currency, the date up to which the credit is valid, expiry date. Since the beneficiary is usually required to draw a bill of exchange, the terms of draft, that is site or usance, whether the draft is to be drawn on a named bank or the buyer, brief details of the goods and so on. The general procedure in a letter of credit usually follows a set sequence. The buyer and seller agree terms of sale including payment by letter of credit. The buyer issues an instruction to the issuing bank to issue the credit. The issuing bank instructs the advising or confirming bank including specification of documents. The advising bank informs the beneficiary. The beneficiary, if he accepts the advice and is happy with it, arranges shipment. The seller obtains the bill of loading, the other required documents. He delivers them to the issuing authority. Paying accepting or negotiating bank 
whichever is the appropriate one for the settlement. The bank checks the documents. If they are in accordance with the instructions from the issuing bank, if the issuing bank is the paying bank, affects payment as appropriate. If the paying bank is not the issuing bank, it sends the documents to the issuing bank. The issuing bank checks them and if they are correct, releases them to the buyer upon payment of the amount of credit. The buyer uses the documents to get possession of the goods. There are various kinds of letters of credit like revocable and irrevocable letter of credit, confirmed letter of credit, restricted credit, revolving credit, red clause letter of credit, transferable credit, back to back letter of credit, standby credit, deferred payment credit, payment credit, acceptance credit, negotiation credit, site and usance credit, fixed and revolving credit, under revolving credit, transit credit. According to Article 4 of the Uniform Customs and Practice for Documentary Credit in Credit Operations, all parties concerned deal in documents and not in goods, services, or other performances to which the documents may relate. Hence, it is necessary that the beneficiary tenders documents in conformity with the requirements of the letter of credit. The payment under letter of credit is available only if the exporter has tendered correct documents. These documents are carefully scrutinized first by the negotiating banker in the exporting country before he makes payment to exporters. The issuing banker in the importer's country also scrutinizes it before reimbursing the negotiating banker. Any discrepancy in document can lead to delays in payment. Quite often, documents are rejected on first presentation because they are either incomplete or incorrect. Form of documentary credit may be issued in the form of site credit and acceptance credit. Documents against payment is a widely used method for receiving payments in respect of exports. The essence of this type of transaction is that the exporter is willing to ship the goods before payment. However, he is not prepared to allow the buyer to take possession of them before the buyer has paid. Under the documents against acceptance method, the exporter draws a usance or time bill in the importer. He forwards the bill along with the export documents to the bank for delivery to importer against acceptance of the bill. Now this is the time for checking your progress. Documentary credit may be issued in the form of site credit and issuance credit. Right or wrong? Wrong. Advising bank is the bank who at the request of the importer issues the letter of credit. Right or wrong? Wrong. The buyer and seller have to agree terms of sale including payment by letter of credit. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Terms of payment are often decisive in obtaining an export order. Hence, an understanding of alternative payment terms is important for marketing goods abroad. There are four methods of receiving payments, and they are advance payment, documentary credit, open account, and shipment on consignment. Advance payment, which is the simplest and safest method, involves remittance by cable or mail in payment for the goods by the time of acceptance of the order or at some time before the shipment. In most cases, however, it may not be accepted by the buyer, except perhaps when the buyer is an overseas affiliate of the exporter or urgently requires the goods and the exporter is in a position to dictate his terms.